of the low IQ argument that thankfully I don't hear too much anymore these days, but I used to hear it all the time, is that the Nixon Southern strategy, they'll tell you, literally flipped racist Democrat voters and put them into the Republican Party, where we're told they exist to this day and dominate our poly party politics. Well, first off, riddle me this then about George Wallace, the Alabama governor who infamously intoned segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. He literally won a third of the black vote during his 1982 bid in the Democrat primary for a fourth term as governor. So obviously that fact alone tells you race relations and politics are far more complicated than they first appear on the surface. Black voters asked by the New York Times about supporting Wallace said they were okay with his apologies and that they like his track record of funding education. And also note that as late as 1982, he was still running as a Democrat. He had a brief stint as an independent and survived an attempted assassination, but he didn't switch parties. In fact, Nixon was elected by the same electorate who gave him Democrat majorities in both the House and the Senate. So did racists during the supposed flipping of the parties forget to change their down ballot vote? Nixon won his landslide victory in 1972 by going after acid amnesty and abortion was his tagline. As being promoted by the far left and so he got support from union workers, Catholics and other blue collar workers. Not exactly Republican strongholds to this day. So again I ask, where is the party switch? Also George Mahoney, famous Democrat perennial candidate who lost to Spiro Agnew in a bid for the governor's mansion in Maryland, ran on a segregationist platform against Nixon's soon-to-be VP. And also when he died in 1989, it appears he stayed Democrat. Ditto for Birmingham, Alabama's infamous police commissioner Eugene Bull Connor, who died in 1973, by all appearances still a Democrat. And ditto again for Georgia Democrat Governor Lester Maddox, who gained infamy by using a pistol and pickaxe to drive away black customers from his restaurant in Atlanta. As far as I know, he stayed Democrat until he died in 2003. One famous segregationist figure who did become a Republican was South Carolina Senator Strom Thurmond, who represented the state from 1954 to 2003 after first serving as the state's governor. But his life trajectory doesn't support the party switch myth either. In the mid-1950s, Thurmond led the uncompromisingly segregationist Dixiecrat splinter of the Democrat Party and helped to draft the Southern Manifesto. However, after he became a Republican, his view on race relations changed. Did you know Thurmond fathered a biracial daughter out of wedlock when he was just 22? His daughter, Essie Mae Washington Williams, received financial support and regular visits from Thurmond throughout her life. Also, fun fact, Joe Biden gave the eulogy for Thurman at his funeral, in which he basically outlined Thurman's conversion and how the pair became friends in the early 70s, in which Thurman told Biden the time for segregationist policies had died. He claimed it died in 1968 very specifically. It was time for the era of civil rights to move forward unobstructed. Biden concluded by explaining how at the end of his life, Thurman was respected by many black staffers on Capitol Hill and that Thurman employed many himself, more so than most any other lawmaker at the time. Race relations across the board were just changing. It didn't move from one party to the next. And once again, returning to the party switch canard about the South, most of those reliably blue states didn't become reliably red states until very recently. For Alabama, that wasn't until 1987. For Mississippi, that was 1992. For Georgia, that was 2003, if you just look at the governor's races. So did suppose racists go into hibernation mode in the interim from Nixon, only to emerge decades later? And for fun, here are some other examples of the first Republican governors of some of these southern states since Reconstruction, since they were solidly Democrat for the intervening century. First, we have Arkansas with Winthrop Rockefeller in 1966, who beat out a vocal segregationist who was running on a platform to stop civil rights. He became the only governor in the South to hold a public memorial for Martin Luther King Jr. after his assassination in 1968, as the rest of the governors were Democrats and stayed quiet. We can also look to Kentucky, whose first Republican governor since 1927 was Louis Brody Nunn in 1967. Nunn was part of Eisenhower's presidential campaign and later worked as governor to outlaw racial discrimination in housing. He had to fight the state's Democrat-controlled legislature to do so.